speak to Sergei Somleni. He's the founder and co-director of uh, the European Resilience Initiative Center, and he joins me now live from Berlin. Thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World. Uh, does the fact that uh, Russia's drone attacks on Ukraine came just a day before the Victory Day parade tell us anything? Yeah, thank you for having invited me today. Uh, indeed, uh, the Russian attacks have intensified. It's not just today. We have a massive intensification of uh, the Russian attacks since at least four days. We had a brutal attack on, on a train in Kherson three days ago with uh, many wounded uh, in the train. We had an attack on a, on a, on a, um, on a trade area also in Kherson on the only day in the week when this uh, trade mall was opened and the artillery strike came exactly at the day, having killed, I think, about like 20 or 30 people. And we have four nights in a row, massive drones attack against Kyiv and against other Ukrainian cities with cruise missiles, with drones. Um, this is a sign that, of course, Russia uh, wants to, to demonstrate its strength uh, while not being able to achieve goals in Bakhmut area. They bombard civilians instead. Right, and now it seems like uh, the Wagner mercenary group is on board with uh, Russia again, especially when it comes to the fight in Bakhmut. What does it mean for the future of the conflict? Well, we, we cannot be sure if uh, uh, what Prigozhin, the uh, owner of Wagner, or better say, a managing director of, of Wagner, saying, <clears throat> if it is true. We don't know. Because, uh, of course, Prigozhin, uh, despite his influence in, inside of the uh, Wagner group, he doesn't act on his own. He, he acts uh, in the limits which have been set for him by the Ministry of Defense, by the army and by security um, institutions of Russia. So when he um, openly attacks the, the Minister of Defense and the head of the uh, General Chief of Staff and calls them with any possible word which one can imagine, all bad words you can imagine, he uses them. And it uh, remains unpunished. That means that he has like some sort of license for that. We don't know if he's lying when he's saying that um, Wagner Group uh, indeed uh, has not like got all the ammunition or... They got ammunition, but they want now to, to, to pull back, like, to get, like, reinforcements. We don't know it. What we know is that the Russians tried to take Bakhmut since the early this war, since 14 months, and they have managed to come from the former contact line to the current position. It's about, like, 40, 45 kilometers for 14 months. It is actually, even if the Russians will manage to take Bakhmut, it is still a huge defeat for the Russian army. Indeed, and just me, uh, let, let me pick up on that. Uh, certainly, uh, the fight in Bakhmut has been going on uh, for more than uh, 10 months now. But recently, the Wagner mercenary group's head has claimed that his forces will be able to capture the whole of Bakhmut in the coming days. This is not the first time he has claimed something like this. But how likely is it, uh, in your view, for the Wagner mercenary group to capture the whole area, given the fact that there is a shortage of uh, weapons when it comes to Ukraine's military. In fact, this was a statement coming from President Zelensky not long ago that there is a shortage of weapons in the country. Well, um, it is still technically it is possible, of course. Uh, we know, like, according to the Russian own reports, they uh, give uh, approximately one life of a soldier for one meter of advance. Like, that is actually that is less than the light of the human body. Like, one dead soldier, one meter advance. Like, they want to come one kilometer, they, 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 like, uh, they invest 1,000 of lives of their own soldiers. If they bring more soldiers, they can do it. Because, like, Bakhmut is a small city. It was, like, maybe uh, 60,000 inhabitants before the war. It's actually the city which nobody, named, uh, nobody knew its name. Like, only people who traveled there, like, like me, who worked there, they visited Bakhmut, they knew the history. And in fact, it's a very small city without any meaning. And if the Russians will manage to get like the, the rest, like 20% or 15% of the territory of the totally destroyed city, uh, they, they, it will bring them nothing. Uh, like they can, of course, make a huge story out of that for the 9th of May, like a victory day, huge victory. We got Bakhmut, which we wanted all the time, like any Russian dreamed to have Bakhmut. But in fact, they will just go to the next defensive line of, of the Ukrainians because the Ukrainians have defended this area and like 
produce their like build their all fortifications for years and this cannot end good for the russians it doesn't have any strategic meaning in this city it is just the name for the victory parade in moscow like the soviets did in world war ii like killing thousands of their own soldiers and of like enemy soldiers just to have like one name for the back then first of may parade all right, uh, Sergei Sumlani, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Thank you so much.